so uh, what i will do i will straight away go to my presentation i will take around 45 to 50 minutes time to present my presentation and then professor akhil and anj will take over okay let me share my screen first can you see the presentation yes sir yes sir so in this course uh, the my uh, portion is the nirman shastra that is the the indian traditional construction system and the practices <coughs> so uh, before we go to the actual uh, the the salient point of the nirman shastra or the stapatya vidya let me first go through in the very brief uh, the, the outline of the system of the systemic approach of this particular course what i thought this is totally my thought is totally uh, you may agree you may disagree you may partially agree uh, and if you disagree or partially agree so that's the best because i can purify myself so uh, whenever a engineer it i should say it is any engineer it may be a construction engineer it may be a mechanical engineer it may be electrical or any electronics engineer any field they actually go with the material they go with the elements design the different type of elements uh they will go for those third fourth and fifth sixth item maybe based uh, basically from the architectural point of view but still when they want to market it a particular product as a product maybe a electronics engineer will to market a mobile phone as a product so they have to have thoroughly know about the geometry proportion forms and composition right the circuits the elements are all those uh, small things definitely going to work in that but we have to actually compose it and make it in a particular geometric proportionate form so in our domain when we are talking about any kind of a construction we are talking about any kind of a build form or maybe any kind of infrastructure project we have to have thought about those every component of the things but while i'm thinking of those component or designing one of the another i need to have lot of gamut of the things that has to come in my mind the first one let us come down to the now the building construction and the built environment point of view i should know the what is the technology part of it because without the construction technology i am uh, i cannot i mean uh, i cannot go ahead suppose uh, some technologies i mean i am I'm, i'm talking about the present respect some technology is not available in india maybe it is available in the gulf country or maybe it is available in the europe i cannot think that particular thing can be uh, developed in that particular material or element or so because uh, finally it cannot be implemented so the technology part is very essential in that we should know about the material <coughs> we should know about the process of the material we should know the application engineering management etc we'll come in detail after next slide on that then okay the management or the construction the process material is fine then also we should actually know about the science of building science the basic physics of the 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 building the properties material properties and all so suppose the some evaluation of some element let us suppose the element is a window let us suppose element is a roof let us suppose the element is a veranda so those are the typical element and how i will going to evolve the evaluate that particular evolution of that particular element there from the building science point of view then some of the spaces maybe it is a bedroom maybe it is a uh, the central courtyard <clears throat> maybe if it is a office space maybe it is something like a panchayat uh, the 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 meeting area in if you think of a village area so those space has a defined uh, the activities and based on that activity architect actually do those kind of arrangement of the spaces but there are some need of the the, the building science the need of a comfort need that I, i have written in the second line the comfort thermal comfort the daylight the acoustical quality will going to definitely differ from space to space you may allow some the bad acoustical quality in the veranda but you may not allow in the bedroom you may not allow in the panchayat the the meeting room or so that will disturb the the actual activity okay you may have to think of a much more comfort scale in the bedroom or the living room or all those area may not be that that may not be that much important in the in the maybe the 
the, the classroom, school classrooms also, because uh, uh, that much, I mean, definitely you should look into it, but not that much like the bedroom also. So each space and each uh, the, 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 the function of the space, space requires some kind of a involvement of the building science. The third one is the structural system. The thing is that when you think of a building, if you think of a built space and you uh, think of a three-dimensional the product as a building as a product, you need to support it. You need to support it by some means. Okay, it may be a one floor, it may be a something in basement. So you have to support the soil pressure. You, if you have to have a kind of a building, nothing is there, only a single floor building, but there is some kind of the cyclone, that area is cyclone prone or the earthquake prone or maybe the flood prone. So you have to think of some typical structural system that can resist those kind of the external force or so. So from that point of view, we know you have to know some kind of a principles which people start, those principles probably people start from the very beginning, very beginning in the sense as, as per the today's world, we start knowing them from our class seven, class six, maybe small, small, uh, the, 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 the principles of physics, small, some principles of material technology, we started knowing uh, those. And those days also, we they have those kind of a, the, the, uh, the environment that they start thinking from the elder to the, uh, the younger generation after generation, those principles are actually adopted. And today we actually astonished to see that those principles which actually match with the what principles we have learned, we have learned in our system. <clears throat> then this principles to the systems and elements, we have to look into it. We have to see the applied load external force. Just now I told you, then the material behavior and the internal stresses. So, you know, there are M N number of materials available. You can choose any material. You can choose a rock. You can choose a timber. But, you know, the, the material behavior is entirely different in under the, uh, the given conditions of the load also. So, based on these three typical domain, we can broader, broaden this particular field. This broaden this particular field of the construction and the the, the, the uh, construction of a particular build form. And finally, what happened, we'll see that we have to apply application in the modern architecture. Now we have to see that those typical uh, the ideas, those typical principles, those typical practices, how that is applied in the modern architecture. If, if I say that it is not at all applied now, we are everything we forget whatever in the past. And now, no, no, no that, is, that is not true. We have definitely going to apply. So when we see this, we have to first see that how much lesson from the past we have applied, then how much you have adapted and how much you have deviated from that. Definitely we have adopted, but definitely you have deviated also. And devi why the deviation is there, that we have to actually examine. And then we have to see the modern building environment, how that can be uh, implemented, because there are a lot of uh, the external pressure are, are there. One of the pressure is the population, one of the pressure is the economic development and all. Because of those kind of external pressure, uh, this some of the things has been deviated from the what they have uh, practices. And we can think some of the case study. But this particular portion, we will take care of the later part of our uh, syllabus or later part. So if, as I understand uh, or as I feel like everything has to be a common way. Sometimes it may be a favorable condition for the building science. It may not be available, technology is available. Sometimes it is required to have a kind of a specific structural systems, but that may not actually allow from that science point of view. So there are a kind of a optimization is required and they did the perfect optimization those days. And finally, something has to be learned and something has to be put forward. Now, next slide, what uh, I will address this slide as a construction technology because my domain area is the construction, field of construction. So in that, as I told you, we have first the things that the construction, whenever I think, is the material. Without material, I cannot construct anything. But the material, when I see, I have to see the whether, what are the property of the material and what are the uh, the material is availability, that is, the, it is available or not. Okay, now, nowadays we forget actually, we can actually borrow the material from the, the, the maybe in West Bengal, if I want to 
uh, construct a house i can borrow the marble from the rajasthan so those days it was not so easy because the transportation and all these things are not too easy but even if it is not too easy but that was much more uh, significantly sustainable because we usually use a local material so the transportation uh, hazard and all these hackles and all has to be tackle, tackle, uh, taken care of everywhere everywhere there is a kind of a material availability somewhere you will find timber somewhere you will find some kind of the bamboo somewhere you may find some kind of a rock or somewhere you may sometimes may find mud so you can use it so if the people who are actually living in near to the bamboo area our bamboo uh, uh, the fertile area if they uh, go for the, the the rocks or whatever it will be creating a mismatch which practically nowadays we tell every students and every uh, the domain we can actually significantly tell the use 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 local material which is available at least around the 300 km in and around your site and that is the one of the prime criteria for the sustainability so availability is one of the uh, most important criteria for the material point of view then the process if you get the material you can then and there do, cannot use the the raw material you have to process it you have to query then the dressing maybe it is from the stone point of view you have to transport you have to you have proportion some mixed proportion has to be there maybe the that particular raw material cannot be used or maybe the two material when you try to attach you have to uh, put some kind of the uh, the, the adhesive uh, on that or maybe some kind of the fixtures we have to uh, uh, which uh, should have done some third material or the the second material so process is very important and this process and the material gives you the application area the application area talks about the sustainability that i already told you the functionality of the space the requirement that is the strength and durability requirement also so the material process and the application some material may not be applicable suppose 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 if you are if you are in a kind of area where there is a much flood i mean the kind of a thing the flood and all you may not go for mud because mud is very poor in the, the association with the 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 water or so so that is why it may not be very much functional uh, may not be very much sustainable in that particular area but yes mud mud can be used some of the area dry area or those are the areas where there are less amount of rainfall or so so that application also has to be uh, think of also application has to be think of from the strength and durability point of view will come to the next slide so this triangle will create a triangle the process application and the material in the construction technology and then these two things these two gentle, gentlemen will come into the picture one is the engineering and one is the management so what is this engineering one what is this vidya sapatya vidya in that sense of the construction engineering or technology it is the how you going to process how i mean what type of material is required for what type of uh, the uh, the element for the strength or for the durability if some durability is the issue for your roof covering it doesn't matter because you can change your roof maybe after 2 3 years but if the durability should not be a issue in the foundation because you cannot change the foundation after 3 years or 5 years so from that point of view engineering uh, the the or the the this particular uh, the uh, the angle has to be look into then the management management as you know it is going to cover it the how you will be actually going to establish then the it is not only the material it is actually the how the you will going to use the the minimum number of manpower or the efficient amount of manpower or how they are going to be actually involved in a particular project or in kind of a kind of construction so next let us see the <coughs> material property that what we have just now discussed the material property now if i say what if there is a array of material property okay so there is a strength there is a ductility there is a porosity the ductility is that the material how much it may elongate if it is under it some kind of a pull okay so something like if the steel is very very ductile so if you just stretch a steel it will actually uh, before failure or before rupture it will uh, the uh, elongate long i mean it maybe around 15 to uh, 18% it will elongate then the porosity how much porous i mean how much is the the air cavities are there in a particular uh, in a particular uh, material okay so there are different type of rocks you know uh, they have different type of porosity some may have uh, higher porosity 
and they are very light in weight some may have almost uh, the very negligible amount of the air voids they are very uh, solid or the density is very high then the water or moisture movement some typical uh, that just now i talked about the mud it is very much favorable in this kind of a movement it will actually allow the water to move from one place to another one side to another side within no time and it can retain also and then gradually it is decomposed or uh, disintegrate not dis decomposed disintegrate and then the problem will start okay so there are sometimes some kind of a timber which may i mean if it is if it is properly seasoned and all it's rather uh, has the moisture movement is very poor but if it is not seasoned there is something uh, the sap 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 uh, juice is already there or sometimes it actually allows there are some uh, microbes that will actually Uh, allow those kind of the water to be uh, come in and then there is uh, some problem started then the abrasion how this is the uh, erode how it is actually under the uh, adverse condition how it will be actually the wear and tear will occur in a particular material then the density is is a very prime kind of the material property i should actually write it in the beginning density should be coming the very beginning there is a very prime or the, the property then the hardness yes hardness is also one of the property because uh, the material uh, if it is soft or if it is hard there are a lot of uh, the things you can decide uh, i can do or i cannot do something like that then there are thermal expansion then thermal conductivity then the thermal diffusivity those are all thermal uh, qualities or, or the properties then there may be the sound absorption and the sound transmissions and all those things are there now if there may be uh, some more there may be some more whatever i thought of i just listed down now if you see this uh, uh, 10 or uh, 9 or 10 or 11 those metal property you can uh, actually very interestingly group them the first two if you group they will give you the structural strength how much will be the span of the the your the, the, the span length of your room what should be the load transfer geometry or load transfer path how much is the flexible of your structure because of the ductility and all you can decide okay so these two are actually group into this domain then suppose this porosity the water movement water and moisture movement and the abrasion those are it is there it will decide your durability because if it is porous it will actually attract water because of the capillary reaction if it is not that much uh, the uh, i mean the, it is actually very much a wear and tear prone kind of a material so uh, like layers of rocks and all so there are some sedimentary layer uh, rocks uh, it will not going to be durable it will fade it will fade up uh, fade the yeah, that the layers i mean the, the surface layers because of the adverse action of the wind or maybe some kind of other things maybe you uh, put it over the as a as a soft uh, uh, the pathway so it will actually erode it actually going to wear and tear so after some days you have to change it the life cycle the material replacement the maintenance maintainability maintenance all these things will be uh, actually you, you, you can decide based on these three properties also then the density and hardness what they will do carving you know the, our temples our uh, our old temples and all are having beautiful carvings beautiful decorative features so those if it is actually if you want to have you have to select those typical type of rocks and that you should know about the or they should know about the density they should know about the hardness yes today we have a modern the equipment to test the hardness but we have modern equipment to test the density nowadays maybe the some of the uh, the, the the electronics or the, the this equipments are there in our time you have to do some manual way to finding the densities and the hardness but uh those days also they should actually have those kind of the scientific base to know about the density and the hardness to select the material or the rock pieces which rock and what type of rock will be required for the carvings decorations then it will actually tell about your time of construction if the density is high so definitely it will be take much time to transfer from place a to place b and definitely your uh, the the material availability or the this particular area will be not very close to, should not be very close to your site there may be a um, uh, 10 15 20 km apart the distance is maybe maybe 70 km apart so the time of construction is there then the manpower is there a manpower requirement because if it is very hard very dense definitely for to do the same amount of job more amount of manpower will be required then the material transportation and all those are the 
if you want to decide this particular domain you should look about this two uh, properties then thermal things are there so that is actually going to be select i actually tell about the climate responsive design the thermal comfort whatever we have talked about the earlier slide that the building science properties also and finally the sound absorption of course will give you the, the acoustical qualities and all so based on that let us go to the uh, the some of the construction uh, the practices during the vedic period in this <coughs> you see the the in those days uh, the quality of housing is the is a measure of the development the housing quality which probably uh, more or less still exists in our present civilization or the present systems also the quality of housing is a kind of indicator of the uh, the, the civilization around of course we can uh, think of that the high rise buildings and lot of the uh, good looking buildings very densified i think it is uh, named as a concrete jungle can a development index the yes yes manhattan is uh, wonderful and definitely they are developing because of they are going high rise or ulta the high rise is there so they are developed if you go to the say jahid road of dubai it's the it called as the manhattan of the east if you go to the uh, the the taiwan or maybe the hong kong or maybe the shanghai they are high rise prone area so those are developed so that is okay that is the indicator definitely the housing was the till today it is the indicator whether today it is a good indicator or a bad indicator i do not know that is a questionable things whether it is a uh, indicator of a sustainable development or not that is a different issue but anyway that is a, the indicator of the the so civilization the next thing is that in those days in sanskrit literature if you see uh, in there are references of planning and construction of the building of residence uh, the military uh, housings military places royal housings and religious houses the temples so that there are script there are available script there where people actually take into that today's world there are a lot of books are also available in the vastu constructions and the, the uh, shilpa shastras and all those now in atharva veda there are some uh, uh, depiction of some of the, uh, the the construction and the system of the construction which was narrated as the shala nirman sutta or shala sutta shala means is a room is a space okay we uh, randhan shala randhan means suppose in uh, our language it is the kitchen so shala means a room okay the kitchen room something like that so shala uh, comes with a particular word that particular sanskrit word is called about the uh, the some uh, the space which has some typical type of function so next is the yes I, uh, that i told you it was the the science of architecture and the civil engineering all together is called the stapatya sastra and stapatya is came from the root word from stapana which is establishment and it is actually uh, 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 if you say the stapatya sastra it is kind of a the best based on the engineering principles also so uh, it's kind of a bit scientific way of looking into a particular construction but if you come down to a little bit uh, uh, a little bit primary things where uh, before we go to the science we also imply the art which is actually uh, called architecture architecture is actually is not science fully it's not art fully it has a kind of a 50 50 uh, share between them so uh, if you just go only with the science and technology you will get a box kind of a building which will be very very eyesore uh, in modern world uh, i do not know but if you go to the the those the high rise buildings or so for the limitations of some of the things the buildings are always box like that prismatic type type of thing those are uh, eyesore so now if you want to put some kind of art in it that kind of a decorative features and some kind of a the art movement in ages there are art movements or so and those kind of art movement if you want to put there was a classical era there was a modern era there was a kind of a uh, the post modern era so those are the eras we can divide the art era and also we can see that the parallelly architecture also followed that particular path okay nowadays nobody will go for the victorian chair right those The, uh, the uh, black color victorian chair and the furniture those days are gone so there is a new type of furniture new type of taste so those are like a flowing uh, the river 
So it is not a static, and those the movement of the art is not a static. So to take influence of art into the science, the architecture or the things architecture has been created, and that is why you have to have different techniques of uh, the construction. From that point of view. It is called tapatya kala, not the sastra kala. Kala means, as you know, it is the art. So it is kind of a tapatya sastra and the kala. Those has to be amalgamated. First, the architecture should come. First, a architect should actually propose something based on the science and art, and then the tapatya sastra can take into account for that particular the implementation, which straightforward nowadays also has been seen in the practices. A building project was given to an architect. He first decide the what to do, what not to do, what the uh, overall scenario, and then that is that has been hand over to a uh, civil engineer who will going to give the 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 input in the constructions and all the other things, right? So kala and the sastra will be coming into like that. Let us go to very 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 past area of a past era when there is there are Aryas or the the Vedic periods or so the Aryan people are. There in our uh, the, the northern uh, plains, Gangetic plains or so. So in those days, if you see the housing, <coughs> the housing were made by simple hut, and those forest raw stocks, product, then bamboo, grass, thatch, mud. Those are the uh, typical building materials. There was not even the bricks. There was not even the stones also. Stones were used little later, little later because there are some kind of a, uh, the. Uh, the uh, not ignorance, but there are some kind of the problem of using the stone because of the, there are not so processing instruments also. Next, is, see the plan. It was the circular plan. It, it is the circular plan with the thatched roof cover and the bamboo uh, network. Even if you see the housing in the uh, the, uh, the, 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 the the primitive ho housing in the uh, Africa. Or maybe in the uh, not Latin America, Africa. Maybe in the Africa also, you will see the 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 the, the things are circular. Circular, why circular? Circular is the one of the shape which can you can create easily. You can you should have a center and you should have a radius. The center can be a point which you can fix, and radius can be a thread or something, and maybe a post, maybe and you can actually uh, move three hundred and sixty degree, and you can create a circle. But creating a square is difficult in the land. Creating a square, even today also, today also the square uh, uh, difficult because you have to actually go with the. Suppose you have one point over here, you have second point over here. Now the third point will be where? I mean that will give you a particular angle. I mean this angle has to be 90 degree. So that is very difficult to maintain. It is very difficult to draw. It's very difficult to draw, easy to draw, but it is very difficult to maintain in the ground. So perfect 90 degrees or so. They came, they came with that that, that particular uh, the knowledge within a very very quickly. So initially it was circle. Circle you required only one the center and this is one post and you, you can go 360 degree and you will get a circle something like that. Then you can plot uh, in a, in a, in a, in, a, in in field. And in regular interval, also you can stop and you can have some pegs, and then then, then you can actually uh, cover that particular area. So that is why the initial uh, those are the circles. Uh, it, it started with the circles, but uh, very interestingly, they followed. Uh, they can uh, adopted the uh, the knowledge to create the squares and the rectangles and other uh, type of shapes in the the ground. <coughs> it is. It is it is in the ground. It is in the ground. If you have to think of in that kind of a uh, scenario, that it is difficult. The last one is that in this particular uh, type of construction, the wetland and uh, dub kind of a construction, which uh, method was used, where uh, it has a mud clay is dubbed into the the horizontal or the vertical. Who uh, are the uh, the stacks, wooden stacks, and those kind of a woven kind of a the the material? That means a bio material is actually ah uh, the the mixed with the earthen material. Maybe you can think of a bamboo. You can think of some kind of a forest raw stock product, dry, and they are weaved with each other horizontally and the vertically, and then they are the the dubbed with the clay or the the, the 
embedded inside the clay also. This is, we may say, till today we are using. Till today, if you go to the, 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 the village areas or the very the remote areas, till today people are using. These two materials are very easily uh, you found out in the, 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 the local areas. If, of course, nowadays it is very difficult because we have uh, cut down the trees and all those kind of things. So it is very difficult. But in the village areas, those things are available. But the important thing is that I should actually uh, appreciate this one of the very important thing is that this is the first known composite material. Weatherproof, okay, weatherproof can be done afterwards also, but it is the first composite material in the system which was initially very early it is adopted. And in this, what is the composite material? As you all know, it is a material, it, it is based on two or more than two type of material. And in this material system, in the, the, the when it is the clay and the mud is actually uh, the embedded with the wooden sticks or so. Again, if you look into my first or third slide, there are two typical material properties uh, gone, uh, gone into it. One is the mud and one is the those uh, the vertical wooden uh, the post members. Vertical wooden post member are ductile member. They can take some kind of a the extension, bending, and all those. Because why? It has a fibers. It has a long fibers. Something like you imagine a, uh, the bamboo. Bamboo is an excellent ductile material. Excellent ductile material. And now mud is not that much ductile. Mud is a brittle material. It will actually uh, crack within no time. But with that bamboo, with that bamboo and the mud composite will give you some kind of a protection. Mud is having a very good thermal property. Mud is having a very good thermal property and it has actually give, if, if you want to go, go for a more thicker constructions and all, so you have to use the mud, mud wall. And with this kind of a bamboos or sorry, yeah, the bamboos or the, the those kind of wooden uh, the members, which will actually take care of your ductility of the uh, ductile behavior of the, uh, the 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 element, and as well as it will give you the impart you some kind of a, the insulative property. That is the 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 main feature of the, of the composite material. Where two property, I cannot get it from one material, so I have to use two material very interestingly and judiciary uh, those two materials such a way that I can actually get benefit of both. So next, there is a shape transformation. Just now I have told you, it is very easy to create a circle in a field or in a ground, in a site, but it's not so easy to create the other kind of a shapes. So here they have actually start from the circle, then they go for the ellipse, then they come down to the square and they elongate with the square to the uh, the rectangle with some different proportion and narrow rectangle. These are the, the shape transformation was followed in those early Vedic times. And if you see the shape transformation and with the, some parameters I have written down in, the, uh, in this column, in this column I have written down some of the parameters and the shape transformation, you will see a very interesting feature. So the feature is that when the shape is circular initially, and from the circular, it has gone to the rectangle and this secondary, and then it will go to the rectangular, the third one. This is the third one, third stage. This is can be the second stage, I may say. Sorry. And this is the maybe the first stage. So in this, if you see the wall material, it is mud and bamboo, as I told, and then gradually it, this transformation, they go with the mud, bamboo, they started with the timber, how they will start the timber, I will tell you, and then the stone also sometimes, and finally, if you end part, maybe if you take the, the 1,500 years, if you take this journey time, then they also go for the sun-dried blocks, which is the germination of the modern bricks, you may say, or the modern blocks. Roof material, bamboo and thatch initially, it is very easy to construct. Then bamboo and thatch, uh, thatch goes to the stone also, they in, uh, put up the stones also uh, in, the, in the roof, in fact. Even if they go for the clay layers and the clay tiles, in fact, I mean gradually. So those clay tiles is definitely not the burned clay tiles, but how they have the clay layers, uh, it is... You imagine that the clay layers in the roof will going to give you the damage in time of rainfall, but they have some kind of a technique to take care of that. The stabilization method, 
roof shape the in case of the circular it is conical then it will be a, a in case of the square it goes like a triangular folded plate something like this and then gradually when it is goes to the the rectangular it is a barrel or a ball so something like this is went trans transform like this but typically it is not a flat roof in that particular era their flat roof was gave it locked afterwards so over the times the uh, the circular hearts uh, transform to the elongated hearts finally become the narrow rectangular one the shape of the roof also changes as i understand the shorter to end of the narrow rectangular unit become the flatter and the semi circle yes uh sir like uh, you said like there was a transformation uh, in the material like firstly they used the uh, uh, material from uh, like bamboo thatch and and slowly like they used the sun dried block in the indus valley civilization we get like sun dried block uh, uh, in the indus valley civilization what was the time when they used the mud and bamboo only like how in which period the transformation happened actually this this transformation was happened almost a year like the almost um, 1500 i mean aryan the, the middle aryan uh, time it was 1500 bc onwards there is a transformation almost about 900 years or so in uh, the the region of the gangetic plain where there was a settlement settlements of the aryan settlement sun dried brick is also yes that was also used in the uh, the mahanjo daro and harappa that is the indus valley civilization and mostly they used that brick kind of a brick also different proportion of course and nowadays what we have seen the english bond and all it was actually developed from that particular area or that particular civilization but somehow it was not going to be uh, not practiced in the this particular area plain afterwards and gradually that uh, uh, there was a uh, there, there was a much more affinity to use the stones than the sun dried brick which came little later in the aryan plain and the stone came first the timber also came first then the sun dried brick but sun dried brick is already existing in the sumerian also also in the our Uh, this uh, uh, sumerian and sumerian in the iran and all and this our uh, egyptian egypt egyptian sun dried is there it is egyptian mesopotamian sun... hello yes the mesopotamian civilization mesopotamian mesopotamian and sumerian and in our uh, the indus valley it was uh, used uh, uh, in, uh, before the, the them also but sundered in the gangetic plain aryan and the vedic area it has came little later i do not know the exact reason behind it i mean why it is came they why they are not that much of uh, uh, i mean i should actually uh, read more or maybe i have to know that one but the logic behind that uh, i do not know but the stone and the timber came before the sundered block okay. yes uh when this is a narrow rectangular unit become more flatter and the semi opening uh, sorry semi circular opening came out, came out and it actually created some kind of a the windows and those kind of a, the things which you can see in the buddha buddhist period the chekta style of uh, adaptation so we'll see a pictorial uh, thing so this was the the first figure whatever i have already shown you then there was a some changes some changes there was a circular heart and the the, the this uh, the roof has lowered down the roof has lowered down a bit and now next was very interesting now it is a kind of a <coughs> sorry rectangle they go with a rectangular kind of a, with the same material <coughs> <I'm sorry. coughs> so they go with a rectangular plan rectangular plan sorry and that there is no demarcation between the wall and the roof they have actually come like that and it is very easy to construct if you feel uh, it is very easy to construct <clears throat> uh, this is the germination of those vaults and sorry uh, and then you can see those kind of the <coughs> uh, in books those kind of the 
the conical roof and the the vaulted roof the barrel vault roofs are also existing over there which adopted in the chaitya style of course madam may uh, discuss that one and those are the some of the khajuraho and other areas <coughs> sorry other areas the uh, uh, sculpture in the temples which was depicted the the style of housing on those days <coughs> <Sorry>. <coughs> next let us go for the some of the typical housing clustering uh, the of the housing also shankara hello hello shankara uh, please please take uh, break for a few minutes have some water your voice is breaking okay okay okay, okay thank you okay. and uh, i think uh, you have explained wonderfully uh, the various uh, points about uh, the materials the methods of construction i i think the questions can be answered very well uh, the questions from the students can be answered well after my lecture is concluded because then they can uh, have a you know many of their questions will be answered automatically yes uh, yes yes at least some okay yes that is good because i i had a uh, actually had a quite a uh, few discussion with akhi madam regarding our my lecture and her lecture and uh, the way we have decided uh, it will be a kind of a if you see, if you, if you if you actually listen both the lecture then both the lecture will be benefited understanding of the both the things will be benefited so that is uh, that, that is the thing we have discussed several times and uh, we have tried to implement it <clears throat> so uh let me go uh, uh this courtier courtier of course it is the architectural planning also so i am not going to go into very much detail of that so there are ek shala do do shala tri shala and chaur shala which is a kind of a typical type of uh, the courtier which may form uh, a space within which uh, madam will going to tell you better uh, rather me but my interest my point is that the building science a uh, point of view if you have a suppose a chaushala which is a perfect uh, kind of a um, uh, the courtier so this central space is called the courtier open space open to sky it has lot of benefit is a lot of social significance and also the climatic significance if you see this particular type of courtier is used in the the hot and humid climate like this bengal and the kerala and the Uh, those area the maharashtra the coastal areas and also this particular coat here is also used in the hot and dry climate like rajasthan na delhi and all and uh, gujarat and all those area but different proportion the proportion and all she will talk to you madam will talk to you but because of this uh, proportion and this particular space there is a ample amount of the movement of the air and movement of the air will be actually drift or uh, the drifted or the drive because of some kind of the the negative pressure in the uh, the coat air and the the windward side will have a positive pressure and this particular kind of a uh, the climate responsive design if you even if you see in the modern construction if you see the modern construction if you see like this and we have a central atrium we call it is atrium atrium which can be thought of a kind of uh, uh, the the uh, the courtyard kind of a planning we cannot go move because this is the modern building so there is atrium and there is a effect there is a wind effect the wind will drive in and there is a this is this is hot and because of the hot wind density of the wind will going to be decreased and it will flow like that and this particular effect in our uh, the science called the, the 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 stack effect and that is one of the nature of the ventilation so if you if you cut off if you if you cut off the all the floors only one floor and it is open to sky which is a courtyard concept which will give you a kind of a wind flow that is number one the number two is that in this wind uh, in this courtyard sorry in this courtyard if you if you think in a the hot and dry climate or, or a hot and dry climate there is a shadow because of the 
because of the shadow, because of the, the sun path, because the sun is supposed here. So there will be definitely there will be a shadow because of the height of this. And now, if you can adjust the height such a way that it is always going to be a shadow zone. And in the hot and dry type of a climate, a shadow and a non-shadow area, littered area, sun-lit area, there is a difference in the temperature. Maybe the difference is maybe 1.2 degree or 1.7 degree. But that fine difference will help the heat gain through this particular wall to the nearest, I mean, room. The heat gain will be more, more, uh, uh, much less, much less because of the some kind of the, the, uh, the phenomena of the building physics or so. So this mutual shedding, it will give you a courtyard, will give you a kind of a mutual shedding, which is going to benefit the, uh, the be, be, benefit the, the climate responsive architecture. So those are the climate responsive architecture features, which we can develop it from the, those early days of the, the modern courtyard construction. <coughs> I am actually, this is again my uh, understanding, this particular slide. A fence was always there in their neighborhoods. Their people, there is a very socialized people. So they group into, in a, they, they live into in a group. And when they're in a group, they have those two shala or three shala, those kind of a, uh, three uh, families or something like that. And there are groups, but they are actually having a fence in their locality or their neighborhood. There is a smaller fence in their, in their family, uh, family uh, the, uh, the housings, and there is a bigger, frame, a bigger fence in the total neighborhood. So these frames are constructed by the upright post and the bamboo with the horizontal members with the hole. So it is a kind of a, uh, the holes made in the bamboo or the timber and they are actually grooving it with one and another. And it is extended to a definitely, if there is a fence, there should be a gate. And gate, if there is a gate, it is the entrance to a some, something. And if the civilized people are there, they will make the gate decorative. That is our tendency. Always, you see in our front door, our if it is our apartment or maybe our own house, the front door is a teakwood door. So it is a decorative one, a lot of good things go, go good. But the back door is not that way. So there is definitely that kind of the psychology came. Uh, it was there in the sense of the, those kind of a gate, which is welcoming the people from the outside. That's fantastic. So this is the kind of a nature. So this is the kind of a nature will relate this gate to the Toranas in the case of the, uh, the Buddhist architecture. But what I feel, this, this line is my, my, I may wrong or I may write, I do not know. This particular construction of the fence, probably the first type of modular system adopted in the architecture. What is modular? See, this is a module. This is a module. I will tell somebody, I'll actually measure the distance between them and I'll try to, try to, make this, I try to make this distance equal. Suppose it is 10 feet. So all 10 feet. That is number one. <clears throat> and then I will understand that I need one, two, three in the 10 feet. So there are maybe like that. So one, two, three. So in one grid, there are three uh, bamboos. And then I will tell that you have to cut 300 such bamboos or 450 such bamboos in this size. So it is a construction management. And all those, this is the modular system. This is the modular system. So all the things are going to be the same size. And I will replicate that one to the, the, the way. It will be actually enhance the first construction. So somebody will actually, like a blind person, cut 10 feet of bamboo of 450 pieces. That's all. His job is over. Somebody will carry 50 pieces in a bullock cart to some place. And I will fix like that. So 10, about 450 pieces of 10 feet bamboo. There may be of uh, the 60 pieces of this much pieces, uh, this much height of the, the square, the timber. And there may be some, uh, some 45 pieces of this kind of a, the, uh, top railing kind of thing. So this is the first kind of modular kind of system which was adopted. Today, nowadays, most of the things are modular. If you see, and this particular modular system will be going to minimize your wastage. 
minimize your wastage because if you can plan it properly so if it is 450 bamboo pieces so it is 450 bamboo pieces you don't have to need 451 or 449 will not be into work there will be one gap so like that the tiles today if you see the tiles which we provide in our bathrooms or maybe in our living room different type of tiles bathroom we go for the anti skip type of a tiles so this is almost about 300 by 300 mm or maybe some, some uh, bigger one we give in the drawing room 600 by 600 so this is the modular so you will get the catalog and you will actually see that there are 300 by 300 there may be uh, the 150 by 150 smaller size or maybe there are 450 by 450 so according to your bathroom dimensions and all or the toilet dimensions and all you can find that which is the most closest one and without cutting those tile without the wastage how can we go for so we architect are also actually when you decide the size of the bathroom or the toilet for modern days calculate modern days practice we actually think of this modular dimension why we should not use broken uh, the the pieces of the uh, this thing this uh, the, the pieces because that is standardized those five six type of the pieces i mean the dimensions are available modular and if i just now go with some uh, uh, dimension like if i go for dimension like suppose 1500 mm by 1200 mm it's fine good because i can have uh, uh, both are divisible by 300 but if i go with 1750 mm by suppose 1200 mm size of a toilet then definitely i have to use the broken uh, size of this thing. so this is the modern concept of the modular and modular concept is going to increase your productivity faster constructions and all which was there which is my uh, translation of course but with seeing this particular photograph the and the the the, uh, the text which was uh, written over there for the their fence and these things i thought this is the very of uh, the uh, beginning of the modular construction so uh, the dholavira and the lothal civilization there were some like uh, uh size type of uh, not particular centimeter or whatever the uh, measurement they have uh, there was some like uh, the length and the width uh, of same ratio they were using that would be called as a modular system uh, can you repeat please i just initially i just missed your yeah sir uh, in the lothal or dholavira i actually yes. don't remember i have mm -hmm. studied in uh, 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 so there they use the length and the width in the same ratio of every house they they build yes, there yes probably in the yeah. uh, 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 um, um, maybe maybe probably that is that is a good observation from you if you have those some some document can you provide me i mean i am not aware of that i'm sorry to say sir. okay so uh, sir i i have studied in uh, in, in the course of uh, the history of science and technology in ancient india maybe, maybe, Parth, maybe Parth, if, Parth, yeah yeah professor maybe. partha pratim chakravarty told me about this okay this okay thing. sir okay okay maybe uh, definitely so maybe maybe definitely if, if you see the the similar type of dimensioning of the width and these things these are going to be uh, definitely for some reasons maybe one reason maybe they have the stratification that by something like a communism that yes you people are given this size usme rehna hai tumhe bas that's all that may not be the real case that time I mean, because that the society may not be that much of strict i am not very sure but the construction point of view to first construction or so even if you see the the master plan of the chandigarh which madam can tell you better the chandigarh plan if you see they have the plotted development or similar type of elevations or so just to give a Uh, uh, uh some a block as kind of a thing b block is something uh, change but if within the b block the, the your elevation your parking distance and everything has to be same your the height of the the, the boundary wall has to be the same that is uh, influencing le cabuzier for actually creating a similar kind of a unity in different blocks and having the total unity of the city but uh, this whatever you told about that it may be kind of a a particular uh, type of people are actually living over there so they have a basic need almost same and that then 
the wall length and width is the same then it is a kind of a repetition repetition of the practice and then it may go uh, the faster maybe so uh, i will uh, uh, actually uh, stop my lecture after this particular slide and then i will uh, uh, maybe a five minutes of discussion will be allowed or maybe as madam has told we'll discuss afterwards so yes. then madam may uh, take care of that so the r phase of construction the in this slide we'll take care of the substructure as you uh, probably know the things are there uh, below the ground the building cannot stand actually over the ground right it has to have some kind of a foundation so those foundation which is not visible from the elevation point if you stand in front of a building something is invisible which is below the ground it may be a basement it may be the foundation those are called the substructure construction of the house itself it begin from the digging of certain number of holes okay fine the post uh, holes are then in a, there is a depth equal to the distance from the ankle to knee the uh, grouting distance or maybe the gripping distance you may say it is ankle to knee that was the measurement of the whole post and we have to put the post the whole base is prepared with compacted mulch and gravels so you have to put the post and you have to compact with the mulch and gravels so this is the very primitive or maybe very pre i mean the the uh, the primary type of the the construction of the substructure so it is it is give me a kind of a idea that it is a kind of a mat kind of a foundation the foundation is not a isolated one yes there are post which is actually the load taking members actually going to give the 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 superstructure load or the the roof load to the ground or maybe any wind or anything but those are actually uh, supported by a huge base compacted base made of by mud and the gravels that is number one number two is that the uh, <coughs> this bamsha which is the bamboo sleepers that means the split bamboo horizontal split bamboos are then tied with the foundation post so this gives you a first matrix or the first layer of the wall the construction of the wall or the superstructure the in, uh, increase of the high uh, increase of higher span the full bamboo or the tree stems can be used as a transverse beam because it is essential see if you have a higher kind so this is your kind of a base that i have talked uh, just now so this base is uh, is just above the ground plane and this is with your gravels and whatever the mud and all and this is your post sorry this has to be go ankle depth so something like this ankle depth so if it is the shorter span it is fine it goes down like that and if you see if it is lab, if sorry if, it, if, if the if the span is higher you have to have put some kind of a the transverse beam so that is also required and please remember that the hearts are conical so that is the layer of the roof but you have to actually support this particular this two with a transverse beam transverse kind of a beam which actually applied when the higher span is there i'll tell you why because if you actually apply some kind of a load this, there is a tendency of this to go out this a point this vertical point so it is try to tilt like this so to make assure that it has to be in position you tie, you should have it you should tie it actually it is tying tie it so from here if you see now if you look into it it is actually giving you the very basic principle of the truss system where tying will be now you may say sir it is you have drawn a section now how it will be in the plan so if i see from here it is i told you it is circular so there are post circular post which is comes out from the foundation base and there should be some kind of i do not know but definitely there should be some kind of a time up one bamboo may take two time up or like this so like this there will be some kind of a time maybe i this is i left or maybe this is like this 
something like this has to be tie up okay this may be another tie up with this maybe so like that there may be a tie up so these are the transverse beam and over that you require some kind of the roofing material or that that we will discuss uh, next class so <clears throat> this is the uh, the first type of the truss system which actually went evolve uh, in uh, the those days the size of the central beam which is called madhyama bhamsa bhamsa is the split bamboo or the beam bhamsa so this is the central beam the madhyama bhamsa was kept larger or grouped with two or three bamboo so uh, madhyama beam maybe this is if you are suppose there is a there is a need for maybe now if i go a little geometric i'm very poor in uh, sketching so this will be your madhyama this and this and probably you can go shorter with the tying up the shorter like this and there may be a perimeter connections also so gradually they develop this kind of the geometric development and the structural systems with the bamboos and the post or maybe the timber third or fourth point sometimes th those two beams are attached with a pillar are called this a sanjani so again now suppose this if it is large so there is a in this so there is a madhyama so if i see these two are actually going to have this post and if there is a further more if you want to go you have to have a sanjani so there is a, again a pillar so this is the connection of so gradually if you, you see as we understand today that uh, there is a there is a, a capacity of any material you cannot just put a huge uh, bamboo uh, and uh, the, uh, the 15 feet and 20 feet or so no you have to have some kind of a tying up you have to have some kind of a central pillar central support and central systems of the uh, this also so this is the superstructure construction i think i should end now uh, there are some other things also so i think i'll go for in the next class so i i'm going to stop uh, presenting let me i will definitely take you can one thing you can do parallelly you can uh, in the chat box you can write down the questions and after madam's uh, lecture uh, both of us will definitely come and uh, address your uh, doubts i will be love to do i know i cannot i may not answer everything uh, i am also learning so uh, probably uh, but we need those interactions whatever uh, things are there you please write it down uh, after the lecture uh, akhi madam and myself will definitely be to address it thank you very much thank you shankada uh, i think uh, we can have take a short break of uh, say about 3 uh, minutes and then i will be uh, okay can you can you hear me